racing and the curtain closes on Brisbane's Winter Carnival with the Group 1 4X Cup. But no curtains closing on legendary trainer Tommy Smith. He celebrates his 50th anniversary still saddling winners. Motorsport and the battle between Rainey and Doohan for the world title hots up, while Gardner gets his best result of the year. We cross to Malala, where the Nissans are out to regain their dominance in the seventh round of the Touring Car Championship. Historic moments in sport, who captured them on film and how. And rugby league and football, they past the halfway mark and the reigning premiers struggle. Yes, uh, so plenty more to come on sports. Well, Keith Hillier hasn't got any rough habits at all, but he'd like to own him because he's a terrific horse, isn't he, Keith? A great horse yesterday. Bruce, a comment uh, from Jim Cassidy after the race that he said he had never ridden a horse that treated his opposition with more contempt. He could not have put it better because uh, we saw him do that. Uh, it was a fantastic win. It was three wide early and he, he probably got to the front before he wanted to. The horse can come with a late run. The thing that's been interesting about him is his versatility. He's won at 1,400 metres in Brisbane this time. He won the Stradbroke and he's also won at 2,000 yesterday. He's mm. a beautiful weight for age horses. The Derby winner last time. Uh, look, he's sure, I think, now to get an invitation to Japan. And on that note, I think doubles punters should be extremely wary of taking him in Caulfield Melbourne Cups doubles because he's uh, on the top line at present, but he's uh, far from sure to run in that race. Yes, I noticed Better Loosen Up was on one of the top lines for the Caulfield Cup. He's a million to one. He won't start at all. So yeah. I wouldn't want to be taking 10 to 1. Now, I know I like tipping at this stage. 10 right. to 1 about any horse in the Caulfield or Melbourne Cup starting, let alone winning. Yes, it's difficult. There's a long way to go. Well, it's about 18 weeks, that's all. It's not going uh, to be... Uh, it's going to come around quite quickly. But you wouldn't take 10 to 1 about something at this stage, would you? No. 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 OK, rough habit. We, we shouldn't get too carried away in one way, I guess, because it, the opposition, but... Would you say that this horse is a genuine Cox Plate horse? I think he is, Bruce. He's especially good on the wet. He's almost unbeatable on a wet track. But yesterday, he had so much on his opposition that Cassidy took no risk in the race. He rode him purposely away from the fence, and that's a sign of a good horse. Mm. And uh, he drew away, I think, the caller. And made the comment near the post, imagine earning two and a half, uh, 250000 a quarter of a million bucks, this easily. Well, it was Wayne Wilson. Let's go to his call and uh, just see how this uh, very, very good horse from New Zealand treats his rivals in the 4X Cup. Down the side, 750 metres left to go. Domino's the leader. A half length in front of Stargazer and Rough Habit cruising up into third berth on the outside. Kaleo Star is running fourth. Now Postal Act is tracking up behind Rough Habit. A little wide on the track there is Comrade, followed by Ray's Hope. Then Dr Glass over on the inside, Sir Alberton. Then Lord Zorito. Back second, us Meldy Sink and Aquidity whipped them in. Now Cassidy says, OK, let's show them what we can do. And Rough Habit exploded to the lead on the outside and the favourite shot about three in front. 250 metres to go. Rough habit. Three or four lengths in front of Stargazer. Kadeo Star. And then post elect. But have a look at this. Fancy picking up $250,000 as easy as this. Rough habit is going to win the cup by four lengths. Rough habit first. Tight second and third. Raise Hope second. Grolita Multi Sink and Kadeo Star with post elect and a photo as well. Then. Not the most handsome horse, but he's very, very good. And we should mention Jim Cassidy's performance. He's won the Stradbroke handicap the Brisbane Cup and also the Forex Cup, which used to be the Dooman Cup. I, I doubt if it's been done before. It's never been done before, Bruce. Um, look, that was the most impressive win, a great ride, incidentally, too. But, of course, in a Cox Plate, there's going to be Durbridge and a few other big names, Terse and... Uh, Shaftesbury uh, Avenue, oh, Superimpose, yes. all those types of horses. And the ones, the horses who finished behind him yesterday, will be absent, won't they? They will be. So it's going to be interesting. It'll be a... Usually the Brisbane Carnival doesn't uh, throw any great champions. I know great champions have gone there, but they, they haven't emerged from the Brisbane Carnival over the years. Mm. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this horse comes. John Wheeler, his trainer, front. must be a good horseman, like he's consistently had mm. one or two good horses, and he maintains them in winning form, so he knows what he's doing. Well, he's done an excellent job with this horse to be able to change the distances uh, so consistently and win. Another really good net he went round yesterday. His name's Tiny's Finito. He hadn't started since running third in the Doomman 10,000 or the Castle Main 10,000 and he was going for his 33rd win in the big sprint. Wrecker Bites going well, third on the rails, followed by Beat the Traffic Dashing King, Miss Comanche, then Pacific Union, Donatel, John Aron, and Grand Slam is last on the home turn, 400 metres out. Be able to neck in front of Tiny's Finito, looming up to throw down the gauntlet to the leader. Wrecker Bites switching across their heels, he's coming after them, then Beat the Traffic, Pacific Union, and Miss Comanche. Tiny's Finito loomed up on the outside of the Be Able, 200 metres to go. Tiny's Finito just in front of Be Able. Wrecker Bite can't go on with it, Miss Comanche getting into the clear late, but Tiny's 
tiny shot away and he's got them beaten, Tiny Sfinito. Miss Comanche now into second place, but Tiny Sfinito's too good. Tiny Sfinito first, Miss Comanche second. Tight third, Donna tells in a photo with Pacific Union. Yes, uh, an excellent performance there by Tiny Sfinito. Five-year-old Keith, who's, uh, as I said, won 33 races. Very few thoroughbreds win over 20 races. It's a great achievement. Mm. Very few punters have backed that many winners <laughs> in their career. Three wins. That's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. He's a good little horse, and uh, again, consistency, uh, as you mentioned, Bruce. He, uh, he's not far off the top class, and I think that he is being set for the Epsom Handicap yes. at Randwick. I wonder whether he will run a tough mile against top... Uh, top uh, Top What's opposition. <laughs> exactly. It's tough to say sometimes. Keith, too, what time too. did you get to bed last night? I had a very... Uh, <laughs> look, don't you start. <laughs> Incidentally, happy birthday. Oh, thank you, Keith. And I've got you a present that you'll really appreciate. Oh, what's that, Keith? I'm not going to reveal your age. <laughs> I do appreciate that. Thanks. I'm a year younger than you, Keith. Now, uh, the Doom and Slipper was the next one on the program. Did you take the seven to four Chortle? No. I oh. wish I had. Yes. Good win. Good. Any price is a good price about a winner. Here's Chortle winning the Doom and Slipper yesterday. Santa is a length away, third unequaled is going up but deep, followed by Mr Yeltsin in the centre with that bunch two, Badu and Legend, then Prince Celeste on the outside of Shaw Moore, Prince of Masque saving ground close to the inside and then Mr Magician in the home straight now, Wild Flight in front of Chortle, centre behind them on the rails, pulled to the outside is Prince of Masque there, clear of Mr Magician, Mr Yeltsin, Prince of Celeste down the outside and then Madrigar, but Chortle's gone to the front, 150 out, Chortle leads by a half length on Prince of Masque who's trying hard to get to him, Chortle's in front holding Prince of Masque. Gads Hill flying home at the end, but Chortle's got him again. Chortle first, Gads Hill got second, Prince of Masque third. Yes, that race was worth uh, $50,000 all up. That horse has won 280000 He did win the size two starts ago. So he's pretty useful, but uh, the, the top two year olds have been absent, haven't they? Terse and, uh, well, I don't know about Bold Promise whether she'll come up as well uh, in the spring, but uh, Terse, etc. Yes, I think that's fair comment that the top two year olds are missing, but uh, take nothing away from Chortley. He's no. very smart. I'd like to own him. Yeah, he's done well. Uh, the two year olds all round, uh, we're at the end of the season really for two year olds. They've been an average lot, I think, don't you? We haven't had mm. outstanding horses. I think Terse was outstanding. Clearly better than the rest, Bruce. OK, so he's the horse for the Ascot Vale and maybe the Guineas. Well, the action continued in Queensland with the uh, pacing derby last night. Impressionist was sent out a hot favourite in this race. Uh, he'd won the South Australian derby, was second in the Victoria derby, went to New Zealand and finished third there. Couldn't catch a plane back in time to run in the New South Wales derby, so he's been a, a bit of an unlucky horse. Last night, a hot favourite. He went hard a long way from home and his stable mate, Bowerall Boy, made a real race of it in the last 100 metres. Then Lachlan Bear or Rilio Fair Dinkum, a long gap, King of the Clouds, Naval Robin, Lucky by Abel, Jet Raider and Old Tarbox. They went 28-7 down the back and this leader is scooting. Impressionist two, now two and a half to Crisfield. Then Stabiliser battling on and Barrel Boy coming to the outside to chase his stable mate. Impressionist led for home, Barrel Boy in hot pursuit. Impressionist the leader but Barrel Boy's coming at him. Impressionist and Barrel Boy. Impressionist in front, Barrel Boy cuts him down, grabs him and Barrel Boy wins the derby. Barrel Boy has beaten Impressionist and they get the others. Stabiliser a mile away, third from Chris Field and Fair Dinkum. Yeah, the two stable mates, the mile rate, sensational there, 156.7. Teddy Demler, who drove Impressionist, uh, must be getting sick of this. He had the chance of driving Dark Paul in the Victoria Derby, knocked it back, drove Impressionist, got beaten by, uh, by Dark Paul, and then last night could have driven Barrel Boy, obviously, the horse he trains. Ron Hall took the drive, and he was second again. After the break, Keith is going to stay with us. We've got a story on TJ Smith. <laughs>